Although I've seen you live quite a few times and hope to see you many more, how would you describe your concerts to the uninitiated? So my lives are really dynamic because I, I sing, I play the guitar, I play the synthesizer. And recently I also bought a drum pad by Roland. So I, I don't just stand, you know, and sing. Um, I am really multitasking when I, when I do my live shows. I like to, to perform dark, dark gothic uh, songs as well as more synth pop, you know, and I would say songs uh, that people can, you know, dance and can really, you know, lift them up. So not just sad and, you know, painful, painful songs. I like to to have both things in my performance, unless, of course, it's a, it's a live where I am introducing a new album or introducing a, a single, you know, and so it's going to be just that vibe. And usually when I prepare a live, when it's possible, I have also video projections so um, I really like to have uh, uh, the music uh, as well as the videos that I've uh, filmed most of the times. I film the videos or uh, I have background uh, uh, video projections with videos that I have uh, prepared, edited by myself uh, to have that type of mood for, for the concert. Yeah, that's, that's what you know, I like to do. I like to have... Uh, videos on the back so people can understand my vision and can you know relate more to the song and having uh, you know those type of colors in in each in each video describing basically the the song itself and telling a story a vision that i have you know for that type of concert that type of live a message that I want to share with the, with the audience for that type of live. Sometimes I use uh, green, uh, more like green colors. Sometimes I use red and white. Um, when I when I do the editing, you know, emphasizing these colors. And I also have my own lights, so I bring a, a set of lights um, almost all the time on each gig that I organize. Uh, because I think that having that type of mood uh, can uh, can really can really help the performance, and also I think that you know people enjoy it. You know to to have uh, to have uh, professional lights for for the setup. I use both uh, analog and digital uh, in my in my performance. So I've just bought uh, um, a mixer, uh, which is an analog mixer. So it doesn't have any USB, anything like that. And it really has a really good sound. It, it's a bit big, so it's it's kind of hard to, you know, to to move and to bring to bring it with me all the time. But uh I have all the sounds that I like there. And I think it has uh, 10 channels. I can insert, I can have all the instruments that I play. And recently I also started playing uh, uh, not just um, a, basically the synthesizer. I play uh, also a very small one. So okay. it is called Stylophone, and yeah. is a is a very small basically mm, synthesizer. Okay, uh, that it was I think very much used in the sixties, and one of the artists that have used the the Stylophone is David Bowie in one of these songs and it's a very for me it's very easy to use and it's very portable and i really love the sound i really like you know how it sounds especially on the songs that i have and and also as i mentioned i i started also playing uh, an an electronic drum pad by roland uh, which has a lot of sounds uh, i think it has a snare and cymbals and a lot of other drum sounds uh, and you can also add your sounds as well uh, 
So you have your your basically your sounds already prepared in your laptop, and then uh, you can uh, load them in the in the drum pad. So I haven't done that yet, but I plan to do it for most of the songs, so I can have uh, my own sounds basically on that on that drum pad as well. And so it's really really cool. And and then yeah, as I said, I like to have analog and and also digital you know, in my performance. And I have lots of um, pedals that I use for the guitar. I don't know uh, if the audience can tell, you know, but maybe it's just my personal preference, but I really like to to have uh, um, a really unique sound for my guitar. And so that means that you need to invest money in most of the time expensive pedals. Sometimes you you can buy even the let's just say the cheap ones and have a decent sound, but most of the times it's not really possible. So um, I like though to experiment and even like you know having a pedal that is less expensive and connecting them you know to the chain to the pedal chain that I have, it, it really produces very interest very interesting sounds. That's about it for my performance. And actually, I have also um, added uh, a bubble machine recently to my shows, and it's really fun. Uh, and I think it's it's really nice, you know, to have all of those bubbles, especially for the for the songs uh, that are more like synth pop, where you can dance, or even for the songs that are more atmospheric, uh, where I don't uh, really move a lot. There, I think there are a few songs uh, um, where I just want to sing because they are actually very complicated even for me to sing and and hopefully hopefully um I will find uh, a, a partner you know for my music and they can you know play you know an instrument while I'm singing and so you know I can I can actually you know focus on the singing while uh, you know there is another person playing you know an instrument um but yeah this is basically how how I like, you know, to to prepare for a performance, having uh, all of these, you know, set up. I I usually prepare for a live uh, at least for three months, uh, but the promotion and the actual promotion for the show it starts uh, even like five uh, six months before, and I already have, you know, tickets for shows uh, even a year before you know, the, the, the actual date. So I think that the, the next date is on 20, say 2025. And is, I think probably is in May, uh, in Leeds. And I already have the tickets available on my website. So for an artist where you, where you have, uh, live shows, usually you need to book them and prepare them really in advance, even years before. I think I can offer a really good show. You know, I think it's quite entertaining. And, and fun, you know, to, to watch. And, and I think people can have a really good uh, vibe and energy, you know, if they show up, uh, yeah, to my show. Yeah, well, I've, I've been plenty of times and I want to see you plenty more times. So, yes. Um, you like to encourage new and local acts and often have them as support, which means that your concerts give a lot of, lot of value for money for the, for, for the shows. However, there seems to be times when it's been difficult to sell out a venue. What do you think are the biggest problems faced when trying to make a fan base grow? So yeah, I I have played, you know, with the, with other supporting acts. Uh, I play with their Orange Coat, Bethany Gibson. I play out with other bands um, as well. I had them supporting me. I really can't remember all the names because uh, I have a thing with the with names and sometimes I forget names, you know. <laughs> but all the lists of the bands uh, are on my on my website, you know, all the lists of bands that I have, you know, collaborated and have supported me. And and they were actually really good, you know, really great supporting acts to have. Um I think the one of the problems, you know, when it comes to uh to sell out a gig is that sometimes um well established acts they they tend to support they tend to you know um show up only where there are 
other artists that have already uh, a following. Uh, so for for artists like Air Orange Coat or other artists that are emerging artists, it's actually even more difficult to to find uh, spots uh, where they can play and support great artists, not great artists, but established artists. Uh, because the established artists uh, also, I think nowadays, they may struggle, you know, bringing their audience. So what happens is that that the, um, the, the independent artists, the artists that are not uh, still able to bring, you know, a certain amount of people, um, they, it's actually impossible for them, you know, to find those, those type of gigs. So, and, and so it's, it's really hard, even when, uh, you know, it comes to promoting your music online, uh, even though, you know, I have used all the marketing tools that I knew. And even though, uh, I have shared and promoted a gig with, um, you know, videos, uh, photos, flyers, you know, I, I, I even uh, put um, posters and flyers in Bradford and other cities, you know, to promote the gigs. But even, you know, when you do all of this, sometimes people don't show up because usually people show up when there is an established act. And it's, uh, it's actually said, you know, that people are not interested in, in new music or new artists. And especially when uh, uh, it's not uh, expensive at all, you know, to buy a ticket. Um, so, yeah, I, I really don't know uh, how to, you know, fix the, the situation. I think it's, uh, it's really a, a social problem, you know, that we have uh, with the society that, unfortunately, music is not um, as important as it was before. And of course, you know, there is the, the financial crisis. So the fact that people actually are struggling and, and they, they want to save money, you know, so every, actually every penny matters. Um, so yeah, th there are a lot of, you know, a lot of things, you know, that can, uh, have an impact on selling tickets. So it's, uh, it's really hard, you know, there is so much that an artist can do, you know, uh, to, to promote uh, gigs. Um, what I think that, uh, it would be great to see and that can actually change things, you know, in the music scene, because huh? I think it's really stagnant at the moment. I mean, uh, they're always the same, uh, always the same, oh, it's always the same music. I don't see any, any really interesting, uh, um, thing happening. I mean, I, I don't see anything new. It's, it sounds all the same to me. Um, so it's, it's a shame, you know, to not see more female artists, um, more solo female artists on the scene. Um, I think I could perhaps think about maybe, maybe a few, but, um, usually it's mostly bands uh, who are, you know, headlining the gigs. Um, I don't think there, there are many solo female solo artists headlining. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't, I don't see them. Uh, <laughs> I don't, uh, at least in the UK. And I think that the audience has, you know, plays a huge part. So people that, you know, see a gig advertised, you know, online, they should, you know, go and listen to the music online. And if they find it interesting, spend, you know, those five pounds or four pounds or whatever it is, you know, it's not yeah. even, you know, expensive, you know, to spend that amount of money. Costa coffee or a Starbucks is the same amount of money. So um, I would say, yeah, encouraging, you know, the, the people, uh, if they really want to have new music, to actually go and listen to, to new music. Uh, that's the first thing. Then I would say to, to the promoters in Leeds, around Leeds, you know, in the area, to actually make an effort um, to promote uh, new artists. Um, and I am aware you know, of the financial situation that we are living on, but um, if you know the promoters don't give opportunities to, to the artists, to the independent artists to perform, uh, the music scene is going to die. That's the, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's obvious because 
You cannot have, you know, the same bands performing forever because they will get old and older, you know. So yeah. there has to be, you know, um, there has to be a balance uh, in life and in the music industry. And I, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair. So um, I I think that, you know, when, uh, when a good opportunity comes up, uh, even if it's not in the UK, I will, I will take it as long as, you know, I, I feel like, you know, the, the music community, um, is actually, you know, supporting the artists. Uh, and there is actually a music community, like there is a community of artists, you know, that are helping each other. Um, and actually found that it's, um, there is not, there is no support at all between artists, between musicians. I mean, um, there is just a lot of uh, useless competition because there is space for everyone. <laughs> so, uh, it's really, it's really useless and it is, uh, harming, you know, the, um, the music scene itself. Because as I said, there are so many talented uh, artists that, you know, they, they should have, you know, the opportunity to play. Um, and even, you know, having them, uh, opening for established artists will give them the opportunity to show their to show their talent and to actually play you know their songs to an audience so yeah i think uh, these are the factors you know that would probably help uh, independent musicians to have more you know, gigs, gigs, you know, for themselves and to grow their audience, their fan base. Um, of course, uh, there are things, you know, you, an artist can do by, you know, himself, herself. Uh, you can uh, really pay a lot of attention, you know, when you, you perform, uh, of course, you know, you, you can give, you know, a great performance, you know, so that the people that are coming are actually enjoying it and they will come back. Um, but then, of course, you know, after doing this for for quite a while, there has to be, you know, someone like a promoter that can actually help you and bring you, you know, to those venues where you cannot actually, you know, go by yourself. You can book, you know, those gigs by yourself. Even festivals are really actually very very um, are great opportunities for artists, you know, festivals where you can perform. And um, yeah, I think there there is a lot of, you know, things like unfair things happening, you know, in, in the music scene. Um, and I also would encourage artists that are finding difficult um, to to find their audience, to, to have gigs, uh, to actually try other, you know, other places, other cities. Because sometimes, sometimes, like, for example, my audience, yes, I have audience in Leeds, uh, you know, I do have uh, fans in Leeds, uh, but I have a lot of, like, a lot of fans in the, in the USA. And I was actually surprised to see all of, you know, those fans uh, and all of those um, people, even if they, you know, never show up you know, to my concerts. They have bought my music, bought the merchandise, and subscribe to my to my channel, follow me on social media. So sometimes, uh, sometimes we 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 need you know to to perform overseas in other countries. Oh, yes. Perhaps that could help performing uh, like outside of the country. Um, finding an audience there perhaps can help you know to to book gigs here. I hope I'm making sense. Well, I mean. It's it's all to do with momentum and finding an audience. And obviously, as you said, you found fans in America. So yeah. obviously, if the opportunity to play to them would be fantastic. And I'm sure they, they'd love to see you live. And touring hmm. just generates your own reputation and name. And look at Hendrix. He started in America. He couldn't get arrested. But then he, he made it big in England, and then because he made it big in England, the Americans took sat up and took notice of him. So it's all, all, it all just goes out goes to show that if you go on tours and 
put your face in front of people, you get noticed. Exactly. You, you never know who is there, like, you never know who is listening. Moving on. Along with many new songs only available on your YouTube channel, so far you've released two physical CD singles to EPs. What are your plans for more releases? And that, is there an album in the pipeline? If so, what can you tell us about the style, mood and content? Right. So yes, the so the last release was wasting my time, uh, which I have now on Bandcamp. Even if you know it's it's not available anymore on the on Spotify, um, but uh, I think you know when uh, if I can I will be able to if I will be able to I will also you know put it back there. But now it's available on Bandcamp and on my official website. Uh, regarding the 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 plans for a new release uh, i actually uh, started recording songs for this new album um and i started recording at the beginning of september uh, but then i took a break because um i felt like i wanted to record uh, uh, a cover version and i listened to a song that i really i really like this song especially the lyrics and so i thought hmm why not make uh, a cover version of this song and then uh, and then release it you know as as soon as possible and hopefully this will be finished within this week um and release it uh, i will release it on youtube on my youtube channel probably on also on bandcamp and i will have it also on my website and i think it will be free of charge to to download of course because i don't own the copyrights uh, but the song will be, yeah, will be a cover and it would be completely different from the original. Like you wouldn't be able to tell that that was a cover as, as always when I do covers, it's like, is that your song? No, it's not my song. Oh, it sounds like it's your song, but it's not. Um, so yeah. Are you going to tell us what, are you, you going to tell us what the song is? Yeah, it's, it's titled, it's okay. I'm okay. Uh, by Tate McRae. I think I'm saying it correctly. Yes, Tate McRae, uh, who is a um, pop artist um, from Canada, and is very much yeah. The original song is really pop. It's a very pop song, um, and from what I, from what I understand, you know, at least from what I see, how I see the song is that is about uh, personal power. So it's about being more self confident, not needing someone else to to feel worthy and motivated and just being basically happy to be yourself and so it's a very empowering uh, song from my point of view at least that's my you know um that's how i see it well i didn't compose the music but i have written basically other you know um other lines i've written Compose the the synths, I think, yeah, synth lines. Um, so I added a synth line. I have uh, also added uh, drums, uh, different type of arrangement, same same melody, but I have made a lot of changes to the the original song, meaning that not all, all of the there are not all of the verses, you know. So I cut things. A bit there, here and there, um, and I also change it the basically the way I sing it um, or the accents. You know, I change it. You know how I sing the song is completely different. So yeah, I'm very excited about that. Um, I don't know if I will have a video as well with that at the same time, but it would be good to have uh, also a music video with the with the cover. And regarding the, the album, yes, I have several songs that I have been recording that are basically will be a concept album. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm feeling really excited about that, actually. But I think I I don't want to have like a date, you know, in my mind and saying, you know, I'm going to release this, you know, within uh, 2025, even if it was my initial goal. But I think that now we'll just more go with the flow if it makes sense so if oh, yes. my intuition is telling me 
record a song and drop a single now. I will just do that. But yeah, the idea is to is to produce a full album and at least uh, with between eight, ten songs. And most, I think, yeah, they will be all of original songs unless I have also this cover as well in the album. And it will be about demons, mostly, yeah? Mostly okay. about demons, uh, demonic, demonic uh, lovers, and some references to witchcraft and references to to Atlantis and and the very mystical yeah that's how that was it interesting is. yeah look for, look forward to hearing it whenever it comes out uh, hopefully I will find some collaborators you know and I I plan to to distribute more flyers this time to find uh, a, a music producer to to collaborate basically on this album and also um, a musician so it would be very interesting you know to to have someone and helpful to have someone uh, while I'm recording maybe not while I'm recording actually because I prefer to record by myself like when I'm singing I need to be alone when I record it's, maybe it's just my thing but even when I went to a studio to record a song I went to a studio a couple of times uh, and I felt very uh, anxious having someone else's it, other people I don't know I just felt like I couldn't I couldn't sing I couldn't focus it was so weird being in a studio recording uh, with a person that doesn't understand my music or doesn't quite get what I'm doing or I don't really have you know like an understanding or a connection it makes me feel anxious so I prefer to to be in that m in that vibe, in uh, to find that sort of vibe and to be in the right mood, I have to stay by myself. But for the editing process and the actual pro production, I could benefit from the help of another, you know, person. So yes. yeah, I, I will start the the research uh, very soon. Of course, if there are people that wants to collaborate and um, and produce the album with me. They can email me, you know, they can send me an email and we can talk about that. You, you've mentioned already about a forthcoming concert for next year. But mm -hmm. for those that want to keep up to date with your concert plans and buy your merchandise and music, uh, now can you tell us about your website? Yes, of course. So as I mentioned, there will be uh, a gig in Leeds next year is already scheduled all the dates, all the dates for the events are on my website, which is stellawembley.com. And so if you go to the website, uh, on the, basically on the main page, on the home page, there is a menu and you will see, you know, next events. And then you click on that. It's very easy and it will uh, lead you to the, to the page, to the event page. And you can already buy tickets there and. There is also an online store on my website where I sell my merchandise and I sell my CDs. And I really encourage everyone to, to buy the merchandise that I sell there. And there are posters, t-shirts. There is a new collection now that I have created. So I have created posters, t-shirts, and yeah, lots of cool gadgets. And of course, there are the two releases, all that I need and images of that, uh, that are on sale. There are digital downloads and there are also my music and video production services that I offer there. I also offer spiritual uh, consultations for the, um, for the people that are interested in that. As I know, there are people, especially on YouTube, that are following me because of that. So I am offering also that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, everything is on the website. Then, yeah, social media, I have all of the, all of the social media except for TikTok. So Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter. I think I have also uh, Tumblr, if I say it correctly, Tumblr, and Pinterest, and LinkedIn. 
I also have a panel on the Google on Google. Yes, yeah, called Google Panel. So if you type my name on Google, just type Stella Wembley, it will show up. You know the panel, and of course I have Spotify. For now, <laughs> I have Spotify, and I am on also my songs are on iTunes. I have now my Bandcamp um, page, so I really encourage everyone to follow me also there because I actually earn something with Bandcamp, whereas, you know, if you stream my song on Spotify, um, I don't, don't really earn much. So um, i rather, you know, tell you guys, go on Bandcamp or go to my website, you know, to download my music. And there is even like a version of my, you know, my songs, new songs, uh, that I will, you know, have on my website for like maybe one pound each, you know, for each song. Also, there is actually a second online store that I just opened uh, on my YouTube channel. So if you go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to the YouTube channel, okay, it's very important, subscribe, subscribe. Uh, you will see below each video that I publish, there are there is all merchandise, you know, that I have created, which is basically another type you know, of collection uh, is not on my website. You won't find it there and is available everywhere, you know, worldwide. And I also encourage, you know, everyone to, to buy, you know, the merchandise there as well. I also offer now memberships on YouTube and also on my website. And on YouTube is possible to join as a member. Uh, for £2.99 per month and to have access to exclusive videos and to videos that I don't share with the public, music releases uh, sent, you know, in advance. And I also have backstage videos and like recordings of songs, you know, that I'm producing and I will only share it, you know, for the members of the channel. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. Thank you. Stella, thank you for your time. It's been really interesting and I hope uh, hope you get uh, lots of views and uh, likes of it. It was amazing. I really enjoyed this interview. Right, thank you. Okay, thank you for your time. You have a wonderful evening.